The 5.9 liter Cummins turbo diesel engine looks different and sounds different than a gas engine. And because it is a diesel, the Cummins engine often requires different operation and maintenance practices, as well as different diagnostic procedures than those used for gasoline engines. Welcome to Master Tech's sixth release for 1993. In this release, we're going to discuss fuel system diagnosis for the 5.9 liter Cummins turbo diesel. The information in this program covers the engines used in 1991 and a half to 1993 trucks, but much of the material is also applicable to earlier Cummins turbo diesels. Because of a diesel engine's unique characteristics, we'll start by looking at some special fuel system considerations you and your customers need to keep in mind. Then we'll cover some maintenance items and service adjustments that can help solve problems or keep them from occurring in the first place. Finally, we'll discuss diesel fuel system diagnosis. Of the day-to-day -day concerns in diesel fuel system operation, fuel quality and condition is the most important. For one thing, Vehicles with diesel engines can tend to accumulate water in the fuel system. This is due in part to the condensation caused by hot fuel returning to the fuel tank. It's also caused by the fact that diesel fuel often contains some water. Organic contamination, such as slime mold, is another concern. The physical nature of diesel fuel itself accounts for another concern. At low temperatures, Diesel fuel can turn into a gel. This is referred to as fuel waxing. Because of the fine tolerances in diesel fuel injection pumps and injectors, these problems can shut down the diesel fuel system and can damage components. So what can customers do? For one thing, they can make sure the type of fuel they use is appropriate for the ambient temperatures they expect to encounter. The use of a good quality number two diesel fuel is recommended, except in cold temperatures. In cold conditions of 32 degrees Fahrenheit or below, use climatized number two diesel, a 50-50 blend of number one and number two diesel, or number one D diesel fuel. Also advise customers to use the valve on the bottom of the fuel water separator to drain water from the system. They can do this at fuel fill-up or use the water in fuel lamp as a guide. This lamp will remain on after the three-second bulb check if there is water in the fuel. Emphasize that with the engine stopped, customers need to push up on the valve only until clean fuel is evident and warn them to make sure the valve is closed when they're done. Besides fuel quality concerns, customers should also be aware of cool or cold weather starting procedures that may be different from what they're used to on gas engines. For one thing, at temperatures below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, the customer should depress the accelerator pedal halfway to the floor and wait for the wait to start lamp to go out before cranking the engine. This allows the intake air heaters to warm the incoming air these heaters operate for an equal length of time after the engine starts. Improper starting procedures can damage an engine. For example, cycling the ignition switch between on and off too frequently can overheat the air intake heaters and damage the heaters and the engine. And using ether for starting is a dangerous practice that can also damage the engine. That's why it's important that your customers are thoroughly familiar with the starting and running procedures in the owner's manual. It's also a good idea for you to keep these items in mind when troubleshooting a cold start complaint that cannot be confirmed, or when troubleshooting engine damage in cold weather. Besides starting procedures, the owner's manual contains other information that can help keep your customers out of trouble. 
For instance, avoid extended periods of idling that result in reduced engine temperatures. The reduced temperatures can cause carbon and varnish to form. Also allow the engine to idle for three to five minutes after operation under load. This allows a reduction in engine and turbocharger temperatures. When troubleshooting a discharged battery problem during cold weather, keep in mind that the intake air heaters draw a large amount of current. If the truck is used for short trips, the charging system may not have had sufficient time to recharge the battery. The low fuel lamp in the message center is designed to light when the fuel level falls to about one-sixth of a tank. Advise customers that failing to heed the lamp and running the fuel system out of fuel allows air to enter the system. This may result in the truck being towed in for a manual bleeding procedure. To bleed the low pressure side of the system, after adding fuel to the tank, open the low pressure bleed screw. and operate the priming lever until the fuel exiting the screw is free of air. You may need to rotate the engine slightly to obtain the necessary travel for the priming lever. Be sure to tighten the bleed screw and return the priming lever to the up position after bleeding. The fuel injection pump will automatically bleed air through the drain manifold as the engine is cranked. Since the engine may start once the air is bled out of the pump, place the transmission in park or neutral and set the parking brake. In addition, do not crank the engine for more than 30 seconds at a time and allow at least a two minute interval before cranking the engine again. Also remember that when cranking the engine in cold temperatures, you need to cycle the key to off before cranking so that the intake air heaters will operate. Injectors and high pressure fuel lines can be bled by cracking open the lines either during cranking or while the engine is running provided the engine is not hot. This bleeding is necessary anytime the high pressure fuel lines have been emptied or drained. Whenever working around high pressure fuel lines keep in mind that the high pressure can penetrate the skin and cause personal injury. So, wear safety goggles and protective clothing and avoid contact with the fuel spray. Before we leave operational concerns, we should mention a component that is designed to allow air into the fuel system. The fuel tank cap. Keep in mind that it is vented and that using a non-vented cap will result in poor performance. Next, we're going to discuss a few maintenance items you need to be familiar with, but first, Let's try a review question. True or false? The Dodge Ram Cummins turbo diesel engine has provisions for the use of ether for cold weather starting. The answer is false. Ether should never be used in this engine. Cold weather starting aids include the intake air heaters, a fuel heater in the fuel water separator, and a cold start valve in the fuel injection pump. In addition to differences in day-to-day -day operation, diesel engine maintenance requirements are different as well. Because high ash content in oil tends to produce diesel engine valve deposits, the use of an oil with an API rating of CE or SGCE is recommended. In normal service, the change interval for oil and filter is six months or 6,000 miles. In severe service, the interval is three months or 3,000 miles. Above 10 degrees Fahrenheit, an oil viscosity of 15 W40 is recommended. 10 W30 is recommended when the temperature is below 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And this viscosity can be used below zero degrees Fahrenheit provided the block heater is used. If the block heater is not used, a synthetic oil with a viscosity of 5W30 is recommended. A